here in LA. It's a lot cooler on the road. On a bicycle, traveling 80 to 100 miles a day, or so they tell me. Trying to get to the tip of Chile. When I started this project, I had no idea that I'd be spending the next six years working on a documentary that took nine months to film. I figured a year at the most and I'd be moving on to whatever's next. I never actually wanted to do a film about our bike trip. My original idea was to bring a mini DV camera and a laptop, make episodes along the way, then post them to the internet and be done by the time I got to Ushuaia. Uh, as soon as I crossed into Chile, uh, of course, right before I was about to finish the sixth episode, um, my computer crapped out on me. Again. And I think it's the same thing. Obviously, that's not the way it worked out. So here's why. To really understand my situation, you have to understand the primitive technology I was dealing with. My camera, uh, when we reached Selena Cruz, stopped working when I go to record. Just does this. The year was 2005, and tiny high definition cameras that recorded to little cards and DSLR cameras that recorded beautiful video didn't really exist yet. The standard was mini DV tapes. This means I recorded everything to tape, then had to capture each one hour tape to my laptop while I watched it, edit it, compress it super small then upload it to the Spinning Southward website, oftentimes via modem, depending on the internet cafe. Anyway, this ended up being very time consuming. And on top of that, we were constantly moving, so I rarely had time to do the episodes. When I did have time to edit, it was in my tent or some guy's extra room after a 50 to 80 mile day, when I really wasn't in tip top shape. On top of that, my equipment was always breaking from, well, all kinds of stuff. Vibrations from riding, or just it's time has come, but when I go to turn it on, beer. The silver lining to this was meeting all of the different computer repairmen from different Latin American countries, or computadoreros, as I like to call them. La primera es el de que algún cuerpo extraño, ya sea algún tornillo o alguna pieza metálica, causó un cortocircuito. Carga de estática. Una tarjeta electrónica. ¿Eh? Estaba dañada. Simplemente tenía un problema con lo que era el cable de sí. alimentación eléctrica. Sí. Esto lo fue cable. Nada más. <laughs> I definitely felt a kindred nerd spirit with these guys. I'd get to a sprawling Latin American city, spend hours tracking down an electronic repair shop, meet the technician, and they would get to trying to solve my technological woes. Inevitably, they'd have to order spare parts from some distant warehouse, so I would have days to kill while waiting in the city. Oftentimes, we'd become friends and end up hanging out, like the guy who I thought was taking me to a soccer game, but really he was asking me to play on his soccer team. Uh, it was quite the lesson in humility. <laughs> Fixing my equipment just became like a part of the adventure. Okay. Things would break, I'd go get them fixed. They'd break again, I'd fix them again. Over and over until I got to Chile and finally just gave it all up. I think it's the hard drive due to a lot of vibration. And now I have no computer. I just have a big rock again. So, kind of like, uh, I guess I've just accepted it. And uh, now I just concentrate on the filming and uh, relaxing. You know, when we stop, you know, I don't have to, don't have to edit. Kind of nice. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to do.
That's when I realized I was just gonna have to save the tapes and do whatever I was gonna do when the ride was over. <laughs>